Now we had Powell speak today and again came off fairly hawkish, echoing what he said last Friday, emphasizing the need for more evidence that inflation is easing before cutting. And as I continue to say, we're going to eventually see the June uh, cut canceled. Before Powell spoke, there were three cuts uh, still on the table here with the uh, the betting markets with Fed Fund Futures, we currently have, again, the first one slated for July, uh, June. I think that's going to end up getting canceled out and it'll get pushed into July. To have three cuts on the table, that could change. Got a boatload of Fed speakers this week. And again, coming off very, very hawkish. Doing what Waller said last week and what Fed Chair Powell said last Friday. All these speakers are echoing the message, no rush to cut, some even more hawkish. They're saying three cuts are on the, t on the table for the year. There's in disagreement, but we have one for either June or July, and then a second one here uh, for either uh, September or November, and then a third in December, and down here is 2025. Remember, market had priced in seven rate cuts for 2024. It was ridiculous. Talked about it at great length and detail at the time. Then it went down to six, eventually five, and then four. Now it's been fluctuating between three and four, and it's been staying around three more often than not. I think that the June cut will eventually be taken out, and I think that that could happen possibly next week with the CPI data. I think the odds will change, or at least the probability will drop for June if we get a hot number for the CPI next week, one week from right now. As we're seeing the 10-year yield turn off of overhead resistance, tried to get above it and turning down off of it with a topping tail. Uh, same thing, we're turning down with, off of overhead resistance with the dollar. Same thing here, we're turning to off of overhead resistance with our 200 period with the VIX. That could buy the market more time. You wanna be watching this gap on the VIX. If we move back to try to fill that gap, the S&P could try to rally, fill the gap, or challenge the highs. Rejection off of the 200 the last two days, so again, that could buy the market more time. A reversal of conditions, but we haven't seen signals starting to all turn bearish and taking out the 20 period moving average on the S&P daily chart, the 200 in the 60 minute time frame. We got to take those levels out if we're going to see a reversal. VIX uh, getting a red candlestick, trying to get above the 200, but having it fail, turning down today. Please support the channel with the link directly below that allows me to be able to provide you this information. Follow the link, it'll take you to a secured site. You could donate any amount you want, but if you could take a moment to do that, I would really, really appreciate it. I need your help at this time. I thank you for your consideration for that. Again, if we are going to turn, we need to see evidence of that. Right now, we're finding support uh, at the rainbow cloud here. Uh, we haven't seen the swing trend line change, but momentum is shifting with the momentum line turning uh, bearish, their gap lower. That needs to be able to uh, flip the trend by doing more technical damage here and, again, taking balance of power in a negative territory. We haven't seen that yet, and we're finding support at the rainbow cloud. Swing trend line is still green, a little hard to see right there, but the swing trend line is still green uh, 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 as we find support at the rainbow cloud. We have divergences, but they have not flipped the signals. When they do, it's likely gonna be pretty a pretty, uh, a pretty powerful move. S&P daily here, we're right at the critical mass line on the critical mass cloud right here, and Critical mass oscillator still in positive territory. It's got to go negative. We got to start taking out the critical mass line, moving into the lower red portion of the cloud to see a reversal. The buy signal came here. The line has been blue, reaffirmed right here. Tried to turn here, couldn't do it. Flipped right back, reaffirmed the bullish signal here, seeing points of distribution. These little stars up here marking points of distribution along with these little red dots uh, showing that there's distribution. And then, boom, we bounced and ended up breaking out above the consolidation high. Saw some more distribution. Recently, we saw distribution here. And now, recently here, some distribution. So they're selling into the rally. We don't have a reversal yet. 
when we start seeing points of distribution like this and this, it's telling us, hey, it's possible we get a reversal. Now over here, we were still going sideways when we got this one right here, and this was just uh, distribution going on. It did not; Those did not produce a reversal, but this is warning it could, like we had over here some warning signs, and then over here it did. There's some things to be paying attention to, but there was some buying interest here. The little blue dot is telling us that there was some buying interest here. Horizontal support level that we hit, and I talked about that, talking about that video 60 minute chart trying to get some distribution going on here and maybe it's not done yet we'll be watching the gap and if we get above uh, the the previous high we'll be watching the trend line up here again while we have a bearish reversal of conditions for the most part most of my signals still remain bullish I do more technical damage if we're going to see signals change now if the S&P 500 is going to reverse it has to drop below the 20 period moving average. We're still above the 20 period moving average, trying to bounce off of it here in the daily time frame. If we're going to reverse, gonna drop below it, and then it's gotta start rolling over. When we went sideways, we breached it briefly, but then bounced off of it, and we've been coming towards it and bouncing off of it uh, ever since we continue to have the 20 period as support. S&P daily chart. Then the S&P 500, needs to see signals turn bearish and drop below the 200 period in the 60 minute time frame. If we hold below the 200 period in the 60 minute time frame, drop below the 20 period in the daily time frame, once signals get a reversal, we did get a reversal of conditions, we need to see more signals turn bearish. Now we're heading back to try to fill the gap. Once we start seeing signals turn bearish, break the trend line from the recent, the recent lows that have been put in, we get a reversal, signals all begin to turn bearish. You drop below the 200 in the 60 minute time frame. you drop below the 20 in the daily, then the trend can change. You remain below the 200 here and the 20 here in the daily time frame. Right now we're bouncing off of it. We're to lower, we're gonna be watching the gap. We tried to rally off of the 20 period yesterday, we got a doji, and I told you again, I'm watching this gap right here. And if we can come back and fill the gap, then I'm watching to see, do we make a lower high or do we make a higher high and go back up and hit that upper boundary trend line again? Again, possible little miniature double top right here in the intraday time frame, a little tiny one here on the daily. It could give us a reversal if we start breaking the trend line here I got to go further back. Uh, it goes uh, back over here into lows not seen on the chart. But if we break that level, got the 20 period moving average, we can see a turn right here right now. Or we can rally. We can make another lower high. A, or, or we can make a lower high, I should say, because we went slightly higher here. And then come back down and take out this area. But if we start moving down right here right now, got to take out that 20 period in the daily time frame and stay below it. Right now, we rallied up to the 10 period and we halted and slammed the brakes on there. We're watching to see if we get further traction back up to try to fill this gap right here. Actually, there was some uh, volatility. The open, we opened right there, and then we attempted a rebound, and we actually rallied above the previous day's high and halted at that 10 period moving average and then turned down, turned down with Powell, but we still had a positive close. S&P daily chart. Yesterday we got these bottoming tails here at the 20 period on S&P. Got a bottoming tail in the form of a hammer on NASDAQ. So again, I'm watching these gaps. And so far, again, uh, NASDAQ's been going sideways now for five and a half weeks. If we go sideways some more of this by the end of this week, you'll have six weeks of just nothing but sideways. So far, we had that peak with the black candlestick about two weeks ago and that was a black candlestick so far that high is holding s p went higher nasdaq did not at least so far so far they have a divergence between the two and here i'm watching the gap we have this hammer it was a hollow red candlestick on nasdaq yesterday closed above the 20 period went up to the the red uh, 10 period moving average and again slammed on the brakes like the s p here again we went and filled the gap on an intraday basis but we didn't do it on a closing basis, uh, which would be up here at the uh, 18,300 range. 
watching to see if we can fill these gaps and then does NASDAQ stop making new highs? Does the S&P stop making new highs? Or do we go up and make a new high? Or do they diverge so often too, which they often do with one another, but they have a divergence between the two. The NASDAQ about two weeks ago, the S&P just a few days ago, I believe it was last Thursday. Same thing, we, but we got a doji with the Dow. We got that bottoming tail. Dow went, the Dow went lower. The S and P did not, and here Nasdaq did not. They got higher lows. The Dow went slightly lower. Here's the Dow again, getting a candle of indecision. Got that bottoming tail yesterday. So again, Dow nowhere near trying to fill the gap. We went up to try to fill it on the S and P, and uh, Nasdaq didn't do it on the Dow. Closed below the 20 period, but hovering right at that level. Uh, the others went up to the 10 period. The Dow didn't make it. Now, the Dow was all over the place getting the OG. It was up. It was down. It was all over the place. It ended down 43 points. S&P ended up a tenth of a percent, uh, up uh, almost six points. NASDAQ was up almost a quarter of a percent. Russell was up uh, just over half a percent. And the VIX was down about 2% to close at 14.33. So here's what happened today on the S&P 500. On the five minute chart, we gapped lower, got a hollow red candlestick, a higher low. Worked a little divergence there yesterday at the, uh, at the beginning of the session. That divergence is playing, uh, is giving us this traction, but moved to try to fill the gap. Now had gone a little bit lower. We got a higher low in the S&P at that point, but uh, we rallied back up after that hollow red candlestick. We rallied back up towards the 200 period, moved above it, and then we began to go sideways and we formed this trend line right here, started to form a triangle, but then broke down, got above the 250, got above it. And then now we've had this push back down. So again, uh, that's changing now from what was trying to form was a triangle. Now it's moved into a bull, uh, a bull flag pattern here. So if we can get an upward resolution, we need to be able to clear the high from today. And then we have your gap fill up here at the 52.42 area. If we break down, then again, this low could be tested or taken out, and this low could be tested and taken out. We're not gonna fill the gap. If we're just going to start selling off, could be that all giving the warning now, last Friday and today, that they've gotta see the evidence in order to lower the rates. And again, he keeps saying with a strong economy, and with inflation being sticky, meaning elevated, there's no rush to cut. Why would they need to cut? Eventually they will, because eventually the recession's coming and the economic data is gonna get bad. It's very possible we continue to try to rally this week. We could rally into the CPI data next week. Watching what happens, do we get a gap fill and set up a lower high or not, or just turn down? Or do we get above the gap and we have a gap and trap and we go back up and we try to take out the previous high at the 52.65 area and get something like a hanging man candlestick or something like that in the weekly time frame. If we turn down, break the 20 period moving average in the daily time frame, you've got to break the trend line I've been talking about, the trend lines. Broke the rising wedge one, but rebounding back up. Got to break that 200 period moving average in the 60 minute time frame and stay below it if we're going to reverse. So 15 minute time frame, I'll be watching the gap. I'll be watching in the 15 minute time frame. Now that we're above the 50s, above the 200 in the five minute time frame, can price get above the 200? We rallied up to the 200 period here in the 15 minute time frame and slam the brakes on. So if this low can hold, we can try to fill the gap and then we'll challenge the high. If we can't, you can't uh, get above that 200 period here. If we go down, take out this low, then you've got this gap fill down over here to the 5120 area. So just something to pay attention to given that we have this little miniature double top on the intraday charts. Uh, that could take us down to these levels should we not be able to fill the gap and get the traction back up. If we do it right now, buy us more time to either set up a lower high or challenge the highs. And if you challenge the highs, guess where you're going? You're going back up to that trend line again that we keep talking about in the daily time frame. So again, we'll be watching to see here if we can clear the 200 uh, and get above today's highs. 
clear the 200 here in the 15 minute time frame and that is the 52 uh, uh, 28 29 area but we have all these divergences in the um, daily time frame and weekly time frame weekly time frame and I'm watching we had this divergence right here on the RSI here in the hourly time frame but it's what I'm watching is to see if we fill the gap get a lower high or not fill it and get a lower high or have a gap and trap and you go back up here hit the trend line one more time and form a triple divergence here on the hourly chart keep in mind right here kept lower and we're hitting the support zone it was a resistance zone now it's a support zone right here and we're trying to bounce off of it for support and resistance line which has been acting as support same thing here with the MACD. Does it turn back up and we get a divergence or confirm a lower high, or do we just start breaking down? Well, the S&P broke that trend line for the rising wedge. We're, we're still hovering at that other trend line from the recent lows. We had the 10-year Treasury note yield right at the open, up uh, one and a quarter percent. You know, it opened up and then it surged up one and a quarter percent, and then it gave it back and it got another topping tail. We had a topping tail yesterday. Got a better defined one today in the form of a shooting star. Again, if we turn back down after breaking out above overhead resistance, we've already broken the downtrend. We've already broken out of the bull flag. But if we pull it back down to fill the gap here, it could buy the market more time and take us into the CPI data next week. Rally to try to fill the gap on the S&P or even challenge the highs and try to go up to the trend line one more time, watching to see if the 10-year begins to drop. But again, you start getting a strong jobs report. And again, maybe, maybe it comes in weak and it helps the market for the short term. Strong, there's no reason for the Fed to cut. Inflation's hot and ticking back up. There's no reason for the Fed to cut. What's funny is the herd believes that the cuts are going to be bullish, rally on the hopes of the cuts, and then when they come, actually a bearish event. I'm just telling you, we busted up above this area, but we ended down a quarter of a percent. You got another topping tail so we could fill the gap right here, drop back down, get a, a fake out, little head fake right here for the short term, and still come back up if we pull back to the moving averages. At the 50 right here, just below the 200, the 50 has already crossed above the 200 on the dollar as I've been talking about. I did that in great length and detail in my video yesterday. If the dollar pulls back, starting to, and the 10 year starts pulling back, which it's starting to, then again, we could see the market still try to fill the gap and challenge the highs. Watching the 10 year very closely for the balance of the week, especially when we get the jobs report, private payrolls come in today, came in strong and the revision was to the upside of the previous month. Despite that, again, stronger uh, uh, jobs data, Powell taking a hawkish tone, we still managed to have a squeak out again with the S&P 500. Just quickly, that dollar broke out above overhead resistance and it's pulling back as well. So again, if the dollar pulls back, the 10 year pulls back, the S&P can fill the gap and then challenge the highs maybe. Uh, with yesterday's low on the 60 minute chart, we saw momentum recycle back up. Momentum turned back up. We got that uh, bounce here off of the support and resistance line. And here we are trying to bounce off the cloud, the trending cloud as well. I told you we can get back above the 50 period. We can come back and we can fill this gap up here and we can set up a lower high or challenge the high. If we challenge the high, which we do have a little divergence right here, the S&P moved three points above this peak over here. The Dow did not make a new high, neither did the NASDAQ. So we're gonna be watching what happens. But if we can bounce off of the little orange line right here, the support and resistance line continues to act as support over and over again. Resistance is this trend line right here. Uh, if we turn uh, higher, and this level of support holds, right now the cloud and the little orange line, support and resistance line here that we're bouncing off of, then we can fill the gap or move to a higher high. If we go to a higher high, this is the trend line you wanna be watching because that's where the sellers continue to come in at. Again, we have the peak here and the peak here, right here, that if we do push above this level, that will trigger stops. The shorts are at the trend line and horizontal resistance right there. If we push up through it, then we go up to this line right here. And again, 
possibly take us into the CPI data next week. We have low here and then we sold off. I told you we got a little bull flag on the 15 minute chart and we got a bottoming tail, a hammer right here on the 60 minute chart. So if we can get above the 50 and back above the cloud, then again, we'll be watching. Do we fill the gap here and turn? And that's it. And come back down and start breaking the cloud, breaking the support and resistance line and taking out the 200 period moving average, uh, which again would be bearish. Or do we clear overhead resistance and move towards this trend line right here? And again, the moves back and forth, momentum continue to call the turns here on the 60 minute chart. In order for a reversal, we have to see print parameter, which I'm bring you in this video, uh, negative with the divergence, multiple point divergence is forming there, and then take up a 200 period moving average. So again, we'll be watching. We continue to be in this trading range, but we continue to find support at the support and resistance line, this orange line, over and over again. We're moving towards it at least, or tagging it one or the other, and here we tagged it again, and buyers came in. Buyers come in at the trend line, so far now at overhead resistance, horizontal resistance. Some selling pressure there. Again, we moved back to this support level right here, and if we bounce off of it and clear this resistance level, then this is the logical place where we will go towards 5,300. If we clear this level, that will trigger stops. If we set up a lower high and then break down, gotta see signals all begin to turn bearish. So I will be watching momentum here. And if we move back up to extremes, do we form another peak? And it, will that peak be a lower high or will it be a higher high? Now, if we cannot fill the gap, if we cannot fill the gap and we turn, then we could turn off of the trend line right here. Here's the two trend lines that I'm watching. This one right here, we're back testing it right now. Okay, and we went up, we tried to fill the gap and we hit that trend line and we didn't. We slightly breached that trend line uh, ever so slightly yesterday and hit the blue trend line with the doji. And the blue trend line right here, we've hit this trend line and we're trying to bounce there at this level. Okay, the Dow and the NASDAQ are doing the same thing. We have these trend lines. S&P has slightly breached it here. Uh, the Dow's hit it and slightly breached it today. NASDAQ's trying to bounce off of it. So again, I'm watching these levels. Do we back test and start to turn? Or do we go back and fill the gap and get come back up here and then turn? If we did that by the end of the week, you might get like a hammer candlestick in the weekly time frame or I'm sorry a hanging man candlestick weekly time frame or maybe you see something like a doji or something like that develop if we rally going off of the first half of the week here do we rebound into the latter half of the week so again two trend lines I'm watching do we get a back test here and see the turn and see signals all begin to turn bearish break the blue trend line clearly get a a decisive break or do we get back above this broken trend line right here so this is a trend line to be watching. We keep hitting it over and over and over and over and over and over again. Our high from a few days ago is going to hold or two weeks ago from the NASDAQ. We need to see uh, signals begin to turn bearish. We need to take out the 20 period in the daily. We need to take out the 100 period on the hourly chart, the S&P. NASDAQ bouncing off that trend line. The Dow's doing the same thing. This trend line excluding the shadow right here and we hit that trend line uh, right there again and we bounced off of it and that's just above the 50. Uh, we drop below the 20. We're getting back above it. So again, going to be watching what happens here. Do these trend lines break here? Uh, do we uh, get back below the 20 period or do we get traction off of these trend lines here? Uh, for uh, the NASDAQ, Dow, and S&P. This massive divergence I've been talking about with print parameter. So again, that's gonna play out. The question is, did we peak two weeks ago or do we challenge that high? So as I've said, you've got this upper boundary here that's the upper boundary of the channel, the weekly time frame. Never did quite reach it, reached it with that peak that we had two weeks ago. Still may try to hit it. But just know if we break these levels and start breaking the 50, the green line there, then that's going to be bearish. We still have these divergences looming over the daily charts with the RSI and down here with the MACD. It's already turned down. But again, 
stack's been going sideways for five and a half weeks. S&P has these divergences trying to bounce off the momentum cloud and the 20 period moving average and the momentum line right here. Uh, again, we've broken the red trend line, which is the lower boundary of the rising wedge, but we're trying to bounce off these other levels of support and the trend line I'm showing you earlier. And again, the divergence on the RSI and the MACD still remain here in the daily time frame. Got to take out that 20 period if we're going to go lower. The NASDAQ weekly chart, we still have the uh, divergences all over the place in the weekly time frame, and some of them are rolling over. But if we do try to rally, and again, you only get one bar per week here on the weekly chart, we'll be watching to see if we do try to make the, uh, t uh, get a rally, do we try to uh, go up and hit that upper boundary again, or does the NASDAQ stop making new highs? So I'm watching NVIDIA because the NASDAQ is following NVIDIA, which it's also been going sideways. S&P is still down uh, just under 1% for the week. We were down over 1%, but again, if we rally up into the end of the week, you still might get some kind of a doji candlestick or a hanging man candlestick. So I'll, I'll be watching. Do we go back up and fill that gap or not? Or do we get the start of a reversal? Reversal of conditions gapping lower this week in the daily time frame, but we need to see more signals turn bearish. Going to get a reversal. Some piece got to take out the 20 in the daily, take out the 200 in the hourly. The Dow, again, Dow daily chart hitting that trend line as well. Look, we've turned off of this trend line and this trend line. We back tested it and that marked that peak for the Dow. The Dow got a lower high when the S&P moved slightly higher. But here we are. We hit this trend line yesterday. We hit it again, slightly breached it, but you got a doji. So here you are resting right underneath the 20 period moving average on this trend line. Again, we start breaking these trend lines on the Dow, the S&P, and NASDAQ. You're going to go lower. Got those 20 period moving averages. You bounce off of this level. You go back and try to fill the gap. It buys a little bit more time. Do we do that going into the CPI data? You still have these diversions present here all over the place. Multiple point diversions. Uh, MECD is rolled over. Multiple point diversions is what they're, that's telling us is that there is selling going on into the rally. Diversions are being created because the bigs, the big institutional guns, the institutions are selling and we're seeing distribution and that's why we keep turning off of the trend line. Multiple point divergences are telling us we're going to get a reversal, all likelihood, rather than a pullback. And again, NASDAQ hourly, at NASDAQ hourly again, um, tried to find a bottom yesterday. We got a higher low today and we got that move up, but we did not fill the gap. So again, we'll be watching it if we can go higher. Then you've got this trend line right here from the recent highs uh, to contend with if we can go above this level. Again, we tried to exceed this level uh, ever so slightly and turned off of this trend line right here and turned down almost two weeks ago. So again, we'll be watching the gap fill and uh, the highs here and the trend line uh, if we get try to get a bigger rally. NASDAQ's been finding support around the 200 period moving average. We've got to take out that level and stay below it if we're going to get a reversal. So we'll be watching. Do we fill these gaps? And if we do, do we challenge the highs? Do we rally with the jobs data to the end of the week? Start to turn down. Turn down. Do we see other signals turn bearish? If we rally, do we rally into the CPI hit April 10th, Wednesday before the market opens next week?